Look to the Lord's open hand. Romans 8, 28, uh, a verse that almost everyone knows. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But that's not what this section is called. Uh, when the NIV translators put the Bible together, they didn't call this section the good that God gives for those who love him. They didn't name this section after this verse, but rather some a little bit later. This section in the NIV is considered more than conquerors. And it's so fitting. Paul is writing to this Roman church that has a lot of need for help. And one of those needs that they have is the need to be reminded of who Christ Jesus is. He's the Savior. He's the one that conquered this mortal, earthly flesh without sin. So that those who are still living in this flesh might one day live perfectly with him. As Paul relates this message to the Romans, he reminds them of what is theirs. A crown waiting for them. But there's also more. Because nothing on this earth would be able to separate the Lord's open hand from his people. Our lesson today comes from Romans 8, starting with verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is God's word. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Paul was convinced of this, and Paul is someone who probably had seen more of the world than just about anyone else. And he knew what persecution was like. As someone growing up uh, in the Jewish church, he understood what it meant to understand the law. And then he persecuted the church of Christ because he thought that they were bad people. They weren't doing what the law wanted them to do. And so Paul was persecuting the church, gave his approval of the stoning of Stephen, and then Jesus Christ shows his immense love to whom Paul calls the worst sinner of all. So Paul knew what persecution was like. He understood what suffering for the gospel meant after his conversion. And now he's writing to other people who are going through those same struggles. The persecution of being a believer, suffering in the body, going through so many types of things. As Paul relates here, trouble. Any type of trouble, of any kind, hardship, anything that's happening in your life that might take your focus away from God. Persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, all of the things that you could possibly think of. None of those things could possibly take away Christ's love for them. And because of Christ's love not being able to be separated from these people, Paul goes on a little rant, but a beautiful one. One that we take today to see how the Lord's open hand is open to us in all circumstances. For I'm convinced that neither death, not death, and the Lord's open hand for those who believe in him, his hand is open to receive them into eternal life. Nor life. The Lord's open hand provides for us in our bodily and spiritual needs. We will see this very clearly in the gospel lesson. Neither angels, God's own helpers, those whom God has selected to help his own people, to guard and protect them, nor demons. 
When the Lord opens his mouth, the demons were silent. When the Lord told the demons to leave the people, they did, because that's the power of our God. Neither the present nor the future, and I'm going to combine this as one, because for the Lord, a thousand years are like a day, and a day a thousand years. What does the present or future mean to the one who creates all of time? The Lord's open hand can open and close time. And so he allows us our time here to study his word, to get to know him, to hear the message of salvation, to be saved by the Lord's open hand. Nor any powers. Here we understand how powerful God is. In our gospel lesson for this week, we will see Jesus, the Son of God, yet true man, make five loaves of small bread and a couple fish into enough food for more than 5,000 people. It's astonishing that people think that the powers of this world could possibly overcome our God. Our Lord opens his hand and shows his power. I'm convinced that neither height nor depth the psalmist says, when I go up to the heavens, there you are. When I, when I make my bed down in the depths, Lord, you are there. There is nowhere we can go where God isn't. He fills all things and his hand is open to save. Nor anything else in all creation. For the God who spoke and it was, the one who created everything that we have to give us joy and pleasure, how could any of that be more powerful than our God? The one who opens his hand to give salvation, opened his mouth to breathe the starry hosts in the sky for our enjoyment, for our amazement. And the Lord does it for us. Paul is convinced that none of these things will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What more need be said? If the greatest things in earth can't do it, if the greatest things, the most powerful spiritual beings can't do it, if famine or hardship or persecution or sword can't do it, then nothing can. And Jesus proved that nothing can separate us from the love of our God, for he went to the cross to prove that love. The motif that I have found in the gospel lesson for this week is compassion in action. His compassion that he had on the crowd to feed them, to heal the sick, to teach them, he has for us today too. He shows it by providing for all that we need in life. But more importantly, he provides it by giving us everything we need for our spiritual life. For where the love of God is, there his hand is open to save. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the love that you have shown us in your Son, Christ Jesus. We thank you for sending him to this earth to redeem us lost and condemned creatures. We thank you that you created the heavens and the earth to allow us to get to know you better through creation. And we thank you for sending your word to reveal your holy will to us. Help us to cling ever closer to your holy will found in your word, so that we also might be convinced, as Paul was, that there is nothing in heaven, on earth, or under the earth that can separate us from the love that you have shown us in your Son. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.